Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge for the Game Boy brought to us by Konami. Belmont's Revenge is a direct sequel to Castlevania Adventure, the first Castlevania game that was released for Game Boy, and we take the role of Christopher Belmont for the second time. Belmont's Revenge saw some pretty decent improvements from the first Castlevania game, though some annoyances still do exist. The storyline goes that Christopher Belmont defeated Dracula last time but didn't destroy the body. Dracula used his last bit of magic to transform into mist so that he could stay alive but was way too weak in order to actually turn back into human. A few years later, Solayu, the son of Christopher Belmont, was having a coming of age party. The day after the party, suddenly he had disappeared and we found out that Dracula had actually kidnapped him and turned him into a demon. Dracula used the son of Christopher Belmont and his demon form in order to power himself back up and turn back into human. He lived in his new domain in the center of a lake amongst four new castles that came out of the earth. Christopher Belmont must go to each of these four castles and destroy the dark force that's kept there, which is there to prevent anyone from actually being able to change back his son into his normal human form. You can pick any of the four castles to begin the game, and there's no real set order. There's no advantage to picking a castle over another one at the beginning. It just comes down to whatever order you feel like playing them in. The order I will be playing them in is the one that is very first selected at the select screen, and then every time we go back to the select screen, whichever one selected, is the next one I will complete. We start off with the Crystal Castle. Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge looks pretty much like your typical old school Castlevania game. You have your health bar at the bottom along with the health bar of the boss of that particular level. You have your heart meter showing how many hearts you've collected that you'll use for your weapons, as well as a timer. This is the first of the Game Boy games to actually have sub-weapons, though there is only two in this version. You have the Holy Water, which I just grabbed there, used as a classic Castlevania weapon to throw on the ground and then will burn for a few seconds. You also get the Throwing Axe. In the Japanese release of the game, they actually didn't have the Throwing Axe in the game, they actually used the Cross Weapon. You move still relatively slowly in this game, like the first Castlevania game on Game Boy. However, the jumps and some of the pitfalls aren't nearly as dangerous as that game, so this one overall is a little bit easier. Though don't let that fool you, it's still a very tough challenge, but it's easily one of the best action games that was released for the original Game Boy. A lot of the enemies from the first Castlevania Game Boy game do reappear, such as that dragon monster right there that kind of works like the spitting skull heads from the other Castlevania games that rotate and shoot different fireballs straight at you. What they do is you can see they open their mouth and a blast comes out and bounces around the room depending upon where he launches it from. Also returning instead of stairs are the rope ladders that were in the first Castlevania Game Boy game. You can easily slide down them by holding in the button to do a quick slide, which you need to do here in order to make sure you avoid getting crushed by the spike wall. Work your way down and jump into the side panels in order to avoid it for a few seconds and then jump back onto the rope. One annoyance with the whole ropes is that you can't jump off the rope unless you're at a spot where there's actually a platform to the left or right of you. So you won't be able to jump straight into a wall, the game prevents you from doing so. And with this, sometimes if you're trying to make a quick jump off the ladder and you didn't go down quite enough, you won't be able to jump and it may cost you either getting hit, or it may cost you a few seconds if you're trying to do it quickly. When you go down here, take out the guy on the side there before jumping into the water. Now this scene was actually seen in the third Castlevania game for Game Boy, uh, Dracula's Curse, uh, that you actually see this whole water area with these shadows that move through the water and the monsters popping out of them. In this area, watch out for these jellyfish-like monsters that fall from the ceiling, and then, after they get released from the ceiling, they then will slowly move their way towards you. 
Returning in the game as well, as you already have seen, is the whip that throws the fireball when it's fully powered up. And this is a great asset in this game, because the fireball does damage not only the normal enemies, it also does damage to the bosses, and I will be using this to my advantage later on. Unfortunately, just like the first Castlevania game, if you get hurt a few times, you'll end up losing that fireball and have to regain it. Here's our first boss battle of Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge, and when you grab the crystal at, from the candle at the end of each stage, then the boss spawns. This boss is a wizard that uses the cloud at the top in order to actually hit you. You have to attack the crystal that he spawns from before he actually fully appears in order to do damage to him. So I attack him, and then move to the far left or right of the screen away from him, so that when he throws the lightning bolt down, and the fire that comes from it won't actually be able to hit me. You can also jump over the fireball if you like, as I use an axe to finish him off and complete stage number one. Easily the easiest, and it's going to get harder from here on out. Next up is the Earth-themed level, the Rock Castle. We start off with some mud zombies that are going to appear from the ground, and you take them out simply with one hit, but they will keep coming back after you knock them down to the ground, so just hit them to get by them, and then ignore them when they respawn from behind you. There's no point in trying to keep hitting them. An annoyance, just like every Castlevania game, is the bat enemies, but the bats work a little bit different in this Castlevania from the others. As you can see, when they come off the ceiling at you, they move in a different weird kind of diagonal pattern and slowly work their way down. It's a little weird at first, and it may take you a few bats in order to try to figure out the best strategy to take each one out. If you have the opportunity to take them out from a distance, do so. In this whole hallway is kind of a redone boss battle from the first Castlevania Game Boy game, as all these frogs will leap out of these different cracks of holes in the background. You can take them out before they fully jump out, so take that to your advantage in order to get by that room. Next up is another fun part that returns from the first Game Boy game, as you have spikes that will come out of the walls, and they actually make the platforms that you need to work your way up in order to get to other platforms. You're going to be seeing this whole pattern a lot during the game, so get used to the whole splice coming out of the walls thing. We have another hallway full of the frogs, and the same pattern will remain just like the first one. Take them out from a distance if you can, and if they do jump out, thankfully you duck and be able to take them out with the whip when you duck down. Once again, be careful of the spikes that come out of the ceiling. This time we're heading in a downwards direction. Head all the way down to the bottom of the rope, and then you'll get to here. Wait for the spike to come out, and then immediately walk onto it and work your way quickly over to the opposite side before it retracts, because you will fall to your death if you fall all the way down. The enemies in this room can be annoying, and one of the other annoying thing is you're used to taking out the candles in order to get items. However, in this particular room, when you destroy a candle, the room gets completely dark. The enemies that are here, when they reform and go away, you can actually jump onto them like a platform and work your way over those gaps, so be careful with these bug-type monsters when moving around. They only move when it's dark, so you have to use that to your advantage, or be prepared that when you hit these things, they will start moving around once the candle goes out. It may seem kind of weird at first, and it took me a few seconds the first time I played the game to realize that every time I hit the candle, that's what it was causing to get dark. 
After that room, however, the candles won't make the room dark again, so don't have to worry about not hitting certain candles. This whole thing is pretty annoying since it's pretty low to the ground already. You have to drop down, duck, wait for it to come down and go back up, and then quickly walk over the platform, wait for it to come back down and duck, and then work your way over the rope. Here I'm just going to head straight down, there is multiple paths here, and there's a few levels in the game where there's going to be multiple paths, but they all lead to the same bosses and lead to the same end, so it's just a term of preference, whatever side you choose to go to.